Okay, I found schematics and um, also component locators. So very nice, uh, very nice documentation that uh, Phillips did. Um, let, oh, 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 oh. let me give an idea of what we're looking at here as far as um, using discrete ice, uh, discrete transistors and uh, things like off amps and things. So we can take a look at, uh, at this particular schematic and you can see uh, it's all discrete um, transistors. And this is the uh, final output. So this is the uh, output amplifier section. Um, you can see pairs of transistors. So whenever you see a pair of transistor, that's that's that that's an amplifier, right? So it's like a it's like almost think of op amp when you see something like that. So uh, bang, bang, bang. Th th this would come kind, of, kind of be one op amp. So they're bringing in the signal and they're amplifying it, and then it comes into a a, a, a big buffer here. So I don't know if you can see that, I'm wiggling a bit here on the on the screen, but. But this is a push-pull output. There's a drive section and an output section. So this is the main drive section. So uh, yeah, everything's gonna be discrete. But what we're gonna be focusing on first and foremost is the power supply. Now, interestingly, the power supply Interestingly enough, the power supply has op amps in it. it has 741 op amps. Um, and so, uh, the, again, there's the plus 22, the six volt, plus six volts, the zero ground, and the minus 22. And it's a very standard configuration, three bridge rectifiers, three filter caps, and then uh, pass transistors, followed by a current limit section. So there's a transistor uh, on each one to be a current limiter in case something bad happens. And then some type of uh, voltage regulation, which is a, um, how are they doing the voltage regulation? Now there's a Zener here for the, uh, for that one. And then the other one, how are they finding a reference voltage? Uh, let's see, plus six. Where are they finding a reference voltage? I think they're dividing it off of this one. So uh, this one has a Zener, so they're generating a, a 22 and a half, and then they have a voltage divider to get the plus six. And then this one down here, uh, where are they getting? Yeah, it's come, it comes up here as well. So, so basically the 22 and a half is regulated and the other ones follow that one. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of these capacitors. We have a thousand microfarads, thousand microfarads, and a thousand microfarads. And uh, let's see, those are C301, 302, and 303. And we can get out our component locator and C101, 103, and where's one? Here it's two. So one, two, three. These are the these are the ones that we need to uh, that we need to replace. Let's look inside our unit here. Take off the power cord. And uh, they are right here, one, two, three. Um, yeah, and these look like they've been weird. They're, they're look dented, they're, they're really weird looking. Anyway, we'll replace these three and probably that one down there too. They're all big electrolytics and uh, see if things get a whole lot better. All right, these guys coming out. Uh, they are Phillips. Uh, Phillips made these. These are 1,000 microfarads at 63 volts. And this is 1,000 microfarads at 25 volts. And so here's some potential candidates. Uh, let's, let's open some of these up and see what we got. Um, that much gray. Um, here's a thousand at fifty, and here is a thousand at fifty. So I could use those. Uh, 
and let's see what else do I have I've got this bag here which might be some smaller ones for the other one so I think I'll use I'll use these to replace those two and this one I just need a smaller one so let's uh, let's put these away If you're wondering what this, uh, this yellow yellow tray is for, it's for doing exactly this type of thing. There we go. All right, let's, uh, let's dump these out here. Here's a thousand at 25. I like the looks of him. I'll keep him. It's an axial one though, so maybe we can find an axial that will fit the job. 680, that's close. Uh, what's this one? 500. These are all the same. I might just have to use that one. Thousand at 25. That's the same one, right? Oop. Just got away from me. Yeah, those are the same the same thing. We'll just go ahead and use that. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. So put these away. Oops. One escaped. That looks pretty good there. Okay, and this one goes over here, so bend the leads out, make him into an axial. And he'll just go, he'll just go in here. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. And there we go. All right, one, two, three. These down. They were cable tied on. I might just use some hot melt or something like that. But I think I want to use uh, my time here to replace this one as well. Uh, let's see, who is he? Uh, let's get out my diagram. Okay, we've just replaced these and resistor uh, C103, uh, 304, I'm sorry, C304. We've replaced C103, 301, 302, 303, and 304. 304 is a, let's look at the schematic and see where 304 is used. 
304, hmm. 310, 3, uh. all right, so 304 is used here, it's a 220 microfarad, and it is, I would say this is a turn-on delay. Um, we'll, we'll look at that a little bit later. I believe it's a turn-on delay for when you power this thing up. So, let's uh, remove him. And he's 220 microfarads. So let's see if we can find a replacement for him. All right, I found a uh, almost direct replacement here. Perfect size and everything, and it's axial. What more can you want? What more can you want? So I will pop this in here and then I'll we'll give it a try. Okay, let's uh, find our scope probe again. Channel one, zero, doing positive 22.5. That should be the regulated one. Um, we will measure add a vertical uh, V average. All right, we'll just add this so we can read off directly. Okay, let's uh, turn this thing on. And we're getting 22.35, and it's ripple free. Here we're getting negative 22.8, and here we are getting 5.8. So everything is looking good now. Everything is looking good. Excellent. All right. Um, let's see. Should we look at the output? Maybe the output's working now. Uh, let's see here. Let me get these metal things out of the way so I don't short anything out. Let's flip this thing over. And uh, let's look at the pulse out. Ah. Yeah, it's working, I think. Hmm. Is that uh, exposed right? Let's see here. I think you can just start to see that. Let's see. Let's go there. Uh, repetition time. Yes, look at that. Repetition time. The switches are dirty. But yeah, I think it's working. So repetition time uh, duration. That's it. Yep, this should be the width. That looks good. And delay. Not quite sure what that one is. Yeah, I think we're up and running. Excellent. Uh, vernier, let's see here. Normal inverted, DC offset. Ah, that was DC offset. Now we're at zero volts. We can offset it a little bit positive. And we can output it. Yeah, okay. Trigger back where it's somewhere reasonable. And we are not triggering on a reasonable thing. There's probably some high frequency content. Let me uh, menu, uh, noise reject. Uh, let's see, where's my coupling? Here we go. Uh, high frequency reject. Yeah, there we go. There's some fast edges in there that the scope trigger was seeing because this oscilloscope is 350 megahertz. So yeah, there we go. I can make narrow little pulses. I can make, suppose I can make 10 nanosecond pulses. Let's see if that's, that's really true or not. I think I need to change the duration time here and then make little short little one. Yeah. I'm out of its, with these pulse genders, you have to be, everything has to work together. You can't have your duration longer than your repetition rate and, and things like that. But 
take a look at the rise. Let's take a look at the rise time on this thing. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, a little bit of jitter on it. Oh, come on, not triggering on it very good here. Let me turn off that high frequency reject again. Oops. Put it back onto DC. Yeah, there we go. Let's turn this up. And um, let's see here. Measure, add uh, horizontal uh, rise time, uh, four nanosecond rise time. And it's, does this thing have adjustable rise time or not? I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Uh, yeah, I don't think it does. Anyway, uh, I think we have it up and running. Uh, that was easy. Probably should look around for some other things. Um, but yeah, that seems like a, a likely candidate. All right, well, I'll, I'll end this video here and uh, then maybe we can figure out maybe something to do with this. Um, oh, it says rise time. It's under the cow sticker. <laughs> rise time, four nanoseconds. Are we getting four? Yeah, that's what it reads, four, somewhere between 3.9 and four nanoseconds. So yeah, it's, uh, it's meeting its spec. Awesome. I'm validating my calibration here, taking off the cow stickers. Anyway, okay, <laughs> enough, enough for this video.